Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the HP OfficeJet 200 mobile printer. This is a completely wireless printer that you can take around with you to print out wherever you go. And not only is it wireless for its connectivity, it's wireless for its electricity too, because it has a battery built in that will allow you to print to it without having to plug it into anything when you're on the road. So pretty convenient stuff, and we'll be uh, taking a closer look at how all of this works here in a minute. But I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So when we're done with this, it goes back to the HP mothership. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware and see what makes this tick. So this thing is about 4.85 pounds. That's about 2.2 uh, kilograms or so. I had to look that up on my paper there. Uh, so it is a little on the heavy side. It's certainly bulkier perhaps than many laptops are these days. But remember, there's a lot of mechanical stuff going on with this printer that makes it hard to get it much smaller than this and still have it work like a printer you might be accustomed to. So uh, it's mobile in the sense that you can uh, maybe store it in the trunk of a car or have it someplace nearby when you need to print in a hurry there. It has two ink cartridges like many HP printers do. So you've got the tricolor here as well as a black cartridge. Uh, the cartridges are a little on the expensive side though. So the high yield black cartridge is uh, $34. It gives you around 600 pages, give or take, depending on how much ink coverage is on the page. Obviously, if you're printing out photos and whatnot, that number will be dramatically less. If you're printing out text and other uh, things that are less uh, coverage on the page, you will certainly uh, see a little bit more uh, page life out of those cartridges. The color cartridge is about $37, and that'll give you around 400 pages, uh, give or take, as well, depending on coverage. The printer itself costs $279. So this is certainly more expensive to own uh, and potentially operate than a desktop printer will. They don't have that uh, subscriber thing for the ink, unfortunately, on this one. So you'll have to buy uh, the cartridges the way you would normally do that. Uh, so you've got about a 50 sheet feeder here, depending on how much paper you plan to uh, put in the printer. We'll get into some of the print speeds in a minute. It does print out uh, black and white text really fast. So about 20 pages per minute when it's plugged into the wall, uh, slightly less than that when uh, it's on the battery power. But I found uh, the print speed to be surprisingly fast given its size and I was able to print out uh, envelopes from there too. Now you do, do have some options though for connectivity if you're not into the wireless thing. There is a USB connector here so you can plug it into your computer computer, or you can, of course, connect to it directly via Wi-Fi, uh, or what you can do is connect it to an existing Wi-Fi network, and then every computer in your office or home will find it and be able to print to it like many other modern desktop printers allow you to do. So it really has much and all of the same desktop functionality that I've seen on other HP printers that are more designed not to move anywhere, unlike this one, which, of course, is very portable. The battery here is on the back, so you take off this thing here, and you can even replace the battery if you want. So this is the battery here. Battery life is going to be a hard thing to rate because uh, when the printer is printing, it obviously consumes more battery power than when it's on standby. I did find that the battery was draining a bit uh, when I just had it on standby on the Wi-Fi network waiting to print something out. So my advice would be that when you're not printing, just turn it off to conserve battery power because it will uh, drain, not quickly, but I think you'll probably only get a couple of hours of standby time before it's completely dead. So I would turn it on when you need to print and then turn it back off again when you're done. But I have printed out probably about 15 or 20 20 pages today, maybe 30, uh, and I haven't seen much of a drain in the battery. So I'm still about halfway through this battery, leaving it on standby for a little bit, and again, running about uh, 30 pages off of it earlier today. And on the back here, in addition to that USB port and the battery, you have a Kensington lock, so you can lock it down on a desk. If you are somewhere where people walk off with things, you can uh, lock it down. Uh, you also have the power cord here. There's no power brick with this one, just a cord, so all the power supply and everything else is built in, so there's uh, one less thing to lug around with you. You just need to have the cable with you, which isn't all that uh, constricting. And then you have on this side a USB port so you can plug in a USB drive uh, to print out photos only. Unfortunately, it doesn't do PDFs. It only does images. So uh, if you have a photo or something you want to uh, print out quickly, you can plug in your card reader or a USB drive into the side here and uh, crank those things out there. Uh, there is a small display on the front here. It's a little hard to see probably on camera, but it's, it's visible and at least gives you some good idea of instructions as to how everything works. I do recommend uh, logging into the printer's web server. It's got one built in, which makes this process a little bit easier for setting up, especially uh, for getting Wi-Fi going on it, because it is a bit of a pain uh, without a touch screen to use these arrow keys to navigate around Wi-Fi passwords and everything else. Now, there are a few different ways to configure the printer, but I'm going to recommend using your computer by connecting to the printer's wireless access point. It's going to look just like this. It will take you off the internet briefly, but what we want to do here is get the printer on our local network first. 
uh, so that we can print to it when we're at the office. And that will also give us the ability to get all the drivers installed onto the computers that will print to it before we get out in the field with it. So I definitely recommend uh, getting the computers you're going to use with it configured when you're at your home base, essentially, uh, versus out on the road, because it will need to pull down drivers from the internet uh, on both Mac and Windows to get this working. It does it automatically, but it needs the internet connection to make it work. So uh, my advice will be to follow what you're about to see here. This is a one-time process. Once you get this set up on your network, you won't have to repeat it. Uh, so I'm connected to the printer right now. That's its wireless network. And it does take us off the internet, but the printer has its own web server built in. So what you want to do when you are connected to that setup uh, network is type this address into your web browser. And what it will do is take you to the mobile printer's embedded web server. And what I'm going to do here is just click on the network summary button here. And if we go over to wireless and then click on the wireless setup wizard, uh, what it's going to do is give us a warning here. It's going to take us to something that says it's not secure. Uh, if you're on Chrome, you need to click on advanced here and uh, go over to uh, this proceed link here. This is something you'll, you'll see as a warning just because it has what's called a self-signed security certificate. It's not that it's insecure. It's just that they didn't register the certificate for everybody's printer with a authority to authorize it. But uh, trust me, it's fine when you're connected directly to the printer. Uh, no one else is in the middle here. Uh, so you should be OK for this short process. So uh, what we're going to do here is go through the wireless setup wizard. What it's going to do when you click Next is look at what's on your network. And it found uh, the available networks that it can connect to here. So I'm going to connect to uh, my local network here. And when we're done, we're going to be able to get the print driver set up on this Mac. And we'll do that in just a second after I type my password in. All right, so it's connecting to the wireless network here at the house now. It just takes a minute or two to get uh, everything configured. And uh, when this is done, uh, what we'll be able to do now is get the computer back on our regular wireless network, and we should be good to go. My only gripe with their setup process here is that when you click Finish, it takes you back to the beginning again. But don't go and do it all over again. Once you click Finish, it's done and it's ready to go. The nice thing is, too, is that now the printer is configured for the wireless network. So whenever it comes back into the house and you turn it on, it will automatically connect to your uh, home base's Wi-Fi, and you'll be able to use it without having to do this step ever again. So let's take a look now at configuring the printer on our Mac here. The process will be very similar for Windows, too. Now, I do recommend after you do any configuration change on this printer is to give it a good reboot by turning it off and then back on again. It just seems to work better after I do that when I change configuration on it. So as with most electronics, a good reboot uh, always fixes every problem. I'm going to load some paper in now because we are almost ready to start printing on it. I'm going to switch over to my Mac here. And when I click on the plus icon to add a printer, you'll see that it found it on my network. And uh, the reason why I suggested getting the printer on your local network first is that your computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows computer needs to download some drivers, and it does that automatically. So what's happening right now is the uh, Mac here is trying to figure out what it's got. It went and found that it was, it's connected to this HP printer, and it gets those drivers from a server. And if we, we were just directly connected to the printer like we would be on the road, uh, we can't get on the internet when we're directly connected to the printer. So you want to get everything set up when you've got internet access available to your computer. And then when you're on the road, you can connect without having to download drivers again because they are already installed. So that is why I suggested doing it the way I did it here. Uh, so let's get into the printing side of things now. So I've got a document here all ready to go. And what I'm going to do is uh, just go up and print it out. And we'll see how fast it can print out a standard text document. Now, I do have the printer plugged in, so it's slightly faster uh, when it is plugged in versus when it is not. But uh, it's pretty fast in either uh, orientation here. So we are sending it out to the printer now. And we'll switch over to our printer. And you'll see just how quickly it can uh, print out text once it gets everything in there. So it does print. Well, the first page there is pretty light, but the rest of them are a little fuller. Uh, but you can see how quickly everything comes out of this thing. It really is a, a pretty fast printing experience, especially for something so small. So if you are out somewhere and you need to print out 20 or 30 pages at a time, uh, not a problem at all. I think it's going to be great for running off last minute contracts and uh, other things that you might need to do in a pinch. And it does print pretty quickly. And uh, the print quality isn't bad either, even in this draft mode. It will go up to 1,200 DPI. But I found that the print quality at the high level is about where I would see kind of a low to mid-range HP printer. So it's not going to be an outstanding photo printer per se, uh, but it will get the job done, especially when you're out in the field and it is adequate for the task. All right, so I have my iPhone connected now because I want to show you how to connect to the printer when you're on the road. And this process will be the same whether you're on mobile or on your computer. So what you want to look for is, again, going back to that Wi-Fi menu, look for that direct dash E0 HP OfficeJet 200 network, and that will connect your device 
directly to the printer. Now on Android, uh, you do need to download a piece of software from the Google Play Store. It's an HP print extension. I'll put a link to it down below in the video description. Uh, Apple phones and iPads will connect automatically uh, once they're on the same wireless network as the printer. So when you're home, uh, it'll find it when it's just on your network. When you're out and about, you need to connect directly. Uh, your computers, if they have that driver already installed from when you configured it a second ago, uh, will just print to it automatically without any additional configuration. So it all is pretty simple. Uh, so what we got now is we're connected to that network. I'm going to go over to my photos now, and I got this picture of my dog doing what she does best, so I'm going to go and uh, tap on print here. And I had already found the printer, but if for some reason it's not showing up in there, uh, you just click on that option there. It'll go out onto your network, which is just the network now connecting directly to the printer. It will find the printer, and you can then uh, click on print in the upper right-hand corner here, and that printer should start going. This will give you an idea as to how fast uh, color photos photos come out on it. And uh, we are plugged in now. So the test that we did a second ago with the text was also when we were plugged in. Uh, this photo to be coming out very shortly uh, is also done while we're being plugged in. But uh, it's just slightly slower in its unplugged mode versus the plugged in mode. So uh, you will see a slight reduction in speed, but really it's not all that noticeable. So we'll let this photo print out here real quick and you'll see uh, what kind of photo speed you can expect. We're actually doing full page coverage here too. Uh, I think it's in draft mode. I just did the default from the iPhone. So it'll give you an idea as to how fast a, a full coverage page will work. Now, this is something that will certainly eat up ink a lot more than just printing out text. So uh, you will not get four or 500 pages of uh, printouts off of that cartridge doing stuff like this. But again, uh, lighter coverage like we saw with the, uh, the text we printed out earlier should be fine. But you can see here the image is coming out. It looks nice. I'm, even on pretty lousy paper, it looks pretty good. So I'm not complaining about the print quality at all. It's certainly not a photo printer, but uh, it really isn't bad for printing out something you need to do very quickly. And I'm sure if you're a lawyer and you got to print out some evidence here, this is going to, I think, pass muster with the judge and jury. It looks uh, pretty nice here. So you can take a look at a close-up of it too. So that is the HP OfficeJet 200 mobile printer. And I think if you've ever had to lug a big desktop printer out to an offsite project location for a day, uh, this is something I think many people will appreciate because although it's not a, a briefcase size device, it is certainly a lot smaller than having to lug a big printer around with you. And it delivers, uh, to my surprise, speed and image quality that uh, would rival what you would see out of a larger, lower mid-range printer from HP or other manufacturers. So it really is a very functional and capable printer, uh, certainly network capable, so you can uh, print to it wirelessly, both by connecting directly to it or uh, put it into a local area network and make it accessible to everyone there. Compatible with Chromebooks and just about everything else that can print something uh, will likely be able to print to this. And if you don't have electricity where you're plugging in, if that battery is charged, you'll get some useful life out of it too. Uh, HP emailed me right in the middle of this review to give me an answer on the battery life. Uh, so they do say you'll get about 400 pages on a full battery charge in that Wi-Fi direct mode that I demonstrated with the phone a second ago. Uh, you'll get less than that, maybe about 180 or so uh, in color in that Wi-Fi direct mode. So uh, you know, your mileage will, of course, vary. This is a very variable battery life projection because uh, the longer the printer is on, the more it's going to drain when it's in standby mode. So I would suggest, again, just turning it on when you need the print and then turning it off when you're done. Uh, but I think it should get through uh, you know, a good two or three hour span of, of having to print things uh, every once in a while while you're on a work site or something like that. And then, of course, you can just plug it back in. There's no power brick to bring with you, just that power cord, and you're good to go. So I can recommend this. It is a little costly, both in its initial uh, point of entry and the ink. But I think for those of you that need that convenience of portability, uh, this will deliver it with few compromises. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.